All right. These are good. All right, little intro, and then we'll see what happens. Okay. Sounds, Sounds good. good? Yeah. All right. Welcome to the Massage Hodge podcast. My name is Nick Paterka, a licensed massage therapist in Portland, Oregon. Today, I am joined by fellow licensed massage therapist, Megan Grace. Megan, say hello. Hello. All right. Thank so, you for having me here. Thank you so much for being here. And your practice business is called the Megan Grace Movement. movement. Yes. Yes. Love that. A movement. It's like... There's something going on there. <laughs> That's it's a the lot idea. to it. <laughs> um, very cool. So uh, we kind of know each other through Instagram and social media, and we our paths cross that way. And, and now you're here. So could you give me the lay of the land? How did you come to body work to begin with and massage therapy? And then maybe include like what your practice kind of looks like in terms of what kind of your style of work that you do. Okay. Um, so my journey to body work was, I think like a lot of massage therapists, sort of a winding river and then realized all the pieces fit together for this. Um, I went to school originally for psychology. I really wanted to, um, be a, um, marriage and family therapist. And, um, I was going to school doing life and, found out that that was not a good fit for me, um, Hmm. ended up going through, um, several pretty traumatic events in my life and needed to recalibrate and figure out what to do. Um, the last, um, the last one was a car accident in 2015. Mm -hmm. And, um, I ended up with, um, post-concussive syndrome and just over the course of, um, my healing journey, just realizing how, important, um, body work was, um, going to my massage therapist, listening to having her listen to me through my healing journey, um, not being able to use my body in the full ways that I had before, Mm -hmm. not being able to work in past careers that I had done before. Um, it kind of led me to this place where I was like, I need to, I need to reevaluate the tangible skills that I do have that I love and see if I can build a career out of that. Yeah. Um, what, what is the effect or the effect on you of post concussive syndrome? Okay. So post concussive syndrome has been a wild journey to figure out for me. Um, I, I have light sensitivity even, um, even now I end up, um, walking around most of the time with sunglasses on, especially Mm -hmm. inside, um, because, um, fluorescent lights are the devil in my mind. Yeah. (laughs) Um, they, So I end up getting, um, different kinds of headaches or, um, I went through this period of time where I would get almost like this vertigo sensation. Um, I would go places and kind of forget where I had gotten to and like, would get really disoriented. Um, I wasn't able to, um, and still now I struggle with reading, um, reading off of white paper. My eyes don't track as nicely as they Hmm. used to, um, And so, yeah, I kind of, um, I was working in in the insurance industry and that's a lot of computers and a lot of reading and a lot of fine print. And, um, I was starting to learn that like I would go into work and I'd spend half the time trying to figure out how I could get away from the lighting and, um, like, yeah, just how to help my body not feel like it was crawling out of its skin. Um, And that led me to a time of not being able to work for a while. And then from there, I started um, pursuing working in more creative fields and um, started to be an operations manager of a dance studio. And um, I realized that I loved movement, that movement was super important for my own healing, um, getting away from computer screens and being more tangible and with people. was something that I was like, oh my gosh, I can do this. This is amazing, even in the midst of like my own healing journey. Yeah. Um, and so one of my friends was finally, I was giving her a shoulder rub because we were talking about something and she's like, I don't know why you don't just do this. I'm like, do what? She's like, massage, you're really good at it. And I'm like, oh. 
oh, I don't know. Maybe I'll check it out. And so, <laughs> um, thanks friend. Thanks friend. I know. To, and it really did. It happened just like that. Yeah. I was like, oh yeah, I, I don't necessarily need to be, um, reading books or in front of a computer screen to still make an impact when I'm doing body work. So, yeah. um, went to school at East West and shout out East West, shout out East West. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and East West changed my life. It was, um, just such a beautiful community of people that accepted me, um, and really helped me with, um, like learning how to be successful, even with these new limitations that my body had with post-concussive mm. syndrome. They would print everything on blue paper for me. Shout out Mark in the like wow. admin office. Um, they would give me my tests like auditorily. So I wasn't having to read and write. I was actually able to say the things that, um, that I knew and I was feeling really successful. And so that's awesome. Yeah, it was amazing. Gosh, and, that's like such a different part of your brain though. Like, I feel like I would have a harder time. I mean, obviously you, you mm. had your limitations, so that makes total sense. But to, to take a test verbally versus written, it's like a totally different skill. Totally. Yeah. Yeah, it was. Um, it was really encouraging though. Like the teachers were great. Um, they would, a couple of them, like for kinesiology was able to like, you know, even be with the, with the teacher and like talk through everything on yeah. the skeleton. And, you know, that was, it just made me feel like this is, this is my world. This is where yeah. I belong. Um, which have been great. Cause leading up to that, I just realized all the parts of my world that didn't belong anymore. Mm -hmm. And so, um, then I was like kind of looking through my own healing journey at all the things that had helped me. And I was like, how many of these things can I create together to help people? Because I know, I know they work. Um, and the Making Grace movement was born. <laughs> oh, very cool. What um, what piece of it is so? I don't, I don't know if you mentioned it just now, but I know from reading your bio that you studied psychology. Yes. How do you bring that element into your work? Oh wait, before I get ahead of myself, yeah. or maybe you talk about it at the same time. What does your work look like now? So my what work, style of work do you do? Um, so I fell in love with uh, Thai massage. Mm -hmm. um, thai massage is um, fully clothed and um, on the super cushy mat on the floor. <laughs> um, and I loved it because um, there's just this element of um, humanity to it that felt different to me. Being able to use like my knees, my feet, my hands, my elbows. Um, just all parts of me, mm -hmm. um, especially after going through a period of time where um, my brain stopped working and it felt like my whole life stopped working. I was yeah. like, I want to figure out the best ways to utilize my whole body um, as a tool and not just overuse one area. So um, to me, being able to do Thai massage was kind of this adventure and almost a little bit of a dance with my client. Um, and I get to get really creative about what different positioning works well. Um, mm -hmm. The other thing I love is helping people that have experienced trauma. And so for me, the fact that it's a clothed protocol makes it, um, it makes it easier to kind of dabble in some of those like psychological connection yes. points um, yeah. because people are already dressed in something that they feel really comfortable in. And so there's yeah. a little bit of a different I don't know, therapeutic relationship, I guess. Then. Yeah, I would imagine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And to, to kind of have to, you don't have to go into that, that next layer of vulnerability with having yes. some or all of your clothes off on absolutely. a table face down. And yeah. Yes. That yeah, can be, absolutely. That can be, I would imagine that'd be pretty tricky when it comes to, to certain types of trauma. For sure. Yeah. Um, the other thing that I love about it is it gives my clients agency to like get up off the mat if like they need to go to the restroom or they want to you know, I can always give them the option of if something starts to feel a little bit too intense, feel free to get up and move around the room. Mm -hmm. Um, and that movement piece allows, um, people's body and psychology to not feel stuck. Um, and with trauma, a lot of times we feel stuck. And so, um, I wanted to give them just this added layer and piece of agency over, yeah. over where they are in time and space, which is kind of important. Okay. So um, time massage. So Yes. The psychology piece, which is interesting to come to massage from that world because occasionally or maybe even often it comes up where it's like you have to you might have to remind a client that you are not their 
therapist, right. their mental health yes. pr- practitioner. Cause sometimes people like to tell you what's going on in their lives. For sure. So yeah, but so, but for me, I just kind of, you know, if people want to talk, they talk, but I'm, I'm never going to advise them in that regard. Um, and obviously you can't either. That's not your, um, cr- credential I would imagine. Right. You're yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so, but you have this extra knowledge that, so I don't know what, yes. how that plays in. Um, so I am a somatic coach. Okay. Um, and with that, um, cause psychology is the study of the individual. Um, and so I like, that's just kind of the whole concept behind studying psychology. And yeah. so, um, what I use, I use my psychology background with somatic, um, work where, for example, if a person comes in and they're having shoulder pain, instead of looking at them from like a standpoint of, well, your shoulder, your shoulder's a problem. I like to look at it more as, um, what is the story that your shoulder's trying to tell me? And, um, is there a reason why this holding pattern is, um, serving you in the moment? Like, you know, for example, if somebody gets hit in the shoulder, um, you know, like bumped into or like rattled in a car accident or something, um, we can talk about in the mind, like, well, you're safe. You're out of that situation. It's totally fine. Like, you know, heal the, the cuts and bruises and that stuff. But like the fascia and the muscle of the shoulder also experienced, you know, whatever had happened. And so I noticed that some people will just like not even think about it, but their body will stay in a specific pattern to protect themselves. Um, I think the body is brilliant in the way that it likes to take care of itself. So for me, instead of trying to fight the narrative and say, no, you should sit back like this, this, you know, bad shoulder, you're being a problem. I like to like communicate more with the muscle and ask like, well, tell me more about the job that you're doing to serve my client right now. Like, Mm. um, and then we kind of, like finesse through why it might feel comfortable to be in that position and what it might look like to move slightly outside of it and what emotions come up when that happens. Mm. Sounds like very delicate. Oh my gosh. It's so fun. Work. <laughs> it's so fun. Um, yeah, it, it is really delicate. It's interesting. Um, and I really believe that my clients are some of the bravest people on the planet because i um, actually coming in and you know, diving into more of that and believing that your body could, um, like stand to sit in a position that would be more at ease and a little bit less like uncomfortable. Um, not just staying with the status quo, I think is really great. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, it's really fascinating. And I will, um, sometimes I'll talk, I'll talk to the person and then I also kind of talk to whatever part of the body I'm working on too. Um, cause I like to combine the two, the person will be laying on the mat. I'll be kind of working and then we get to an area and I'll like say, Oh, like, well, hello, new friends. Like what, like, what do you have to say <laughs> kind of thing? Um, and then as you know, as my client is talking through whatever comes to mind as I'm touching that area, um, sometimes I'll end up just almost hearing what I feel like the muscle wants to say. Um, like, I'm so sorry you felt the responsibility to, you know, protect this person from this ball coming at you or this, you know, situation. Like, thank you so much for your work that you're doing to protect her. What would it feel like to give yourself, you know, 15 minutes off or Mm. like, and I will literally feel people's like scapula, like just drift into my hand. It's like, oh, finally you heard Mm. me, you get it. And like, um, it's part of that conversation. Like I, I see what you're, I see why you're protecting, Yes. but just so you know, you're hurting them over here while you're protecting them over here. Um, I tried, you know, like, like pulling one area, sure. like protecting here might for sure. Yeah. Um, I really like to frame it in a form of gratitude okay. more, um, to say thank you for how you're showing up for my client. Um, what would it feel like to you, um, to, uh, to give, you know, to give yourself just a couple deep breaths worth of not paying attention to that. Mm-hmm. Um, I try to not like deviate so hard from like, 
I've been in this holding pattern for like 10 years and now all of a sudden we're going to move all the way back oh, this yeah. way. I like to kind of invite the body to have slow moments of like, oh, I moved a little bit, a little bit further outside than I thought was possible. Oh, wait, nothing, nothing happened. Like the sky didn't fall chicken little. Interesting. Mm -hmm. And then let the nervous system have a minute to like almost take in that input and say like, oh, so this could be my, this could be my new reality. Interesting. Yeah. Um, and that slow process and gradual dance again with the, um, with the nervous system and the body is so cool to watch. Mm -hmm. Um, I also with like, um, with a lot of my clients, there'll be specific types of, um, trauma that might have like an intimate nature. Um, mm -hmm. and so if I'm working on like legs or kind of having, having their, um, uh, maybe one hip further open. Um, I'm very sensitive to like, if they start talking about something and their hip starts to close in, it's like mm. this, like curling in feeling. Um, then I invite the body to open slightly more than maybe it had wanted to like to put it back out to the side and then to speak about whatever was happening. And then I try to fill in the blanks and say maybe what it is that the body was wanting to hear at the time that it was injured. So mm. for example, like you, you're powerful, you have control over your body, your body belongs to you. Um, mm. these things and just kind of like be, um, help the body have a different ending to their yeah. story. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's interesting. Um, as it relates to trauma, um, I'd love for you to talk <clears throat> a little bit about this item that you posted recently about the malversary, which is okay. a really neat concept. Okay. Something that, I mean, I, unless I just haven't unearthed it yet, I, I can't like speak to a serious physical trauma if it was never in a super serious car accident or anything. So, <clears throat> but what, what you described makes sense to me if you could talk about that. Sure. Um, so malversaries are my own kind of wacky way of describing, um, when our body, when our body is experienced a trauma, um, and it can be like psychological, mental, physical, emotional, um, and let's say it happened on, um, January 15th, um, of last year, you had some kind of like, you know, big blow up with like a lover or a spouse or, um, whatever. And it was like jarring to your system and yourself. Um, and maybe it had caused like the aftermath of like, just a lot of difficult things had come from that. Um, what I started noticing for myself is I would end up like maybe the week prior, like the week or two prior. So around January 1st or maybe like January 5th, um, I would start getting these like these just painful sensations in my own body. I would start to feel sick, but not like have a fever. I would feel exhausted, like getting out of bed just felt like impossible. Hmm. Um, I would get like more headachey or, um, yeah, just my bones would ache. My fascia felt like it was like electric, almost like crawling. And I couldn't quite figure out. And I went to doctors and was like, what, like, like, what do I have? Do I need? And they were like, you're perfectly healthy. Like, I'm like, oh, awesome. Well, healthy feels terrible today. <laughs> um, if this is what Not healthy helpful, is, yeah. unsubscribe. Yeah. Um, but then what I started to realize is, um, it was actually my body's way of, um, protecting me and warning me that like, Oh, like, remember this time last year, this happened. We don't want this to happen again. So we're going to get your attention in every way possible. Mm. Um, and so what I started to realize is, um, if I was extra kind to myself, um, and more mindful and like, um, did some different kinds of self-care in that week leading up to it. And also just the, just the realization of what was happening. It felt like my body wasn't like out of control again. Like for example, the week leading up to, um, when I'd had the car accident, like I didn't want to drive. I was starting to feel just like this overwhelming sense of anxiety. Mm. And I was like, What's that? Like nothing has physically changed around me, but yeah. my body is just sure something is going to happen. Huh. Um, and so 
the awareness once I figured out like, oh, it's really close to this day on the calendar. Like, oh, you did go through a lot then. Oh, all of you hasn't quite like forgotten that because all of you hasn't quite healed from that yet. Mm. Okay. Like I can be nicer to you. And it also just soothed me to know what was happening. Yeah. It didn't feel like, I don't know. It just didn't feel like crazy making. Um, there was actually a reason for it. And yeah. so, um, I just recently worked with a client that had had a very similar thing happen, had gone to doctors and, um, she was like, I just, I'm just in so much pain. Everything hurts. And I don't know why. And we started talking through, you know, this whole like, okay, well let's start here. And, you know, tell me when did it start? And then I was just like, well, what happened this time last year? And she was like, oh, it was a really heavy month, it was mm. really heavy for me. And I was like, okay, well, let's just play with this idea. Maybe this is what's going on. And like, I could feel her fascia was like literally crawling and moving in my hands. Like hmm. the amount of electricity that was moving through her body was crazy hmm. in the best way. Yeah. And so um, I was like, well, let's find a way to get some of this energy and electricity out of your body. And then we'll inform your body that it's not in that space anymore. It's doing something else now and see what comes of it. Yeah. And it was amazing. We got so much done no, really in just neat. like one session. So yeah. By getting to that root. Yes. Cause yeah. of this, like, yeah. Yeah. By, by getting to the root and giving the muscles, um, a voice, the muscles yeah. and just get a chance to, um, rewrite their story and to also tell her like, Hey, we don't want that to happen again. Yeah. That yeah. mind body connection is not to be underestimated. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So that's, <laughs> um, that's a lot. That's like what you do, where you came from, how some of the work you do. Um, talk to me a little bit about, I know you, you use and advocate for essential oils Yes. and tell me what you like about essential oils and especially as it relates to toxic free living and that sort of, okay. I don't know, transition for, for people. Okay. Um, so with my own, um, healing journey post car accident, um, and I kind of think the car accident more or less just brought to the surface, everything that I had been like, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. And finally the car accident was like, you're not fine. So did, did it um, have to be s such a literal impact in I your mean, life? Yeah. I mean, I think it needed to be, I think I was doing a pretty good job of ignoring a lot yeah. of things. Um, but now I'm learning. Now I listen a little bit more quickly. Yeah. Like I get it. One, one, one thing and I'm good. Um, <laughs> and so part of my own, my own journey was, um, trying to find, um, like I would try to find medications, but I'm a very sensitive person and the medications were causing side effects. And, um, and I just wanted to feel better. I didn't, you know, I didn't want to have more things to try to like, navigate through. And so a friend of mine was like, well, have you ever tried essential oils? They're like natural medicine. It's the part of the plant that actually helps to heal the plant. And, um, when you use it, the body, um, cause plants in human, um, like bodies have, um, similar properties. And so as the oil comes into your system, the body can say, Oh, like, cool. I know who you are. I know where we can use you. Let's let's put you over here and put you to work um, as opposed to synthetic medication where part of it is set up to like mirror what the body does. But then the side effects come from when we're like, Oh wait, but what's this part? I don't know what to do with this. Um, mm. And so my friend introduced me um, to doTERRA. I ended up um, buying a kit and starting to use some of the, some of the products and I started feeling better. I didn't feel as like, run down by, you know, the side effects of medications. And I also, um, like with my post concussive syndrome, I was getting pretty much daily headaches. Um, and I wanted something to try to help that. Mm -hmm. So, um, when I'm also someone that doesn't just like try a product once and then say, okay, world, you should all do this. Oh, yeah. Um, I really like to, um, uh, I like to give it time. And mm -hmm. so, um, so I use the oils from anything from like 
my super sprained ankle to indigestion stuff to um, doing a really good gut cleanse to help with like the super crazy anxiety that had come like, you know, post car accident. Mm. Um, And I started to just feel like it was like my body was quieting Mm. a little bit, which felt really wonderful. And so um, I did more research on um, doTERRA on the way that they test things because I only want to use the best stuff with my clients. And so, um, and on myself and started to realize that like, there's kind of an oil for like, it seems like almost anything, at least something to try. So, um, I loved that. I loved not having to wait till I was super sick to go to the doctor for them to give me medicine. Like the second I start to feel like, Oh, my throat feels a little scratchy or, Oh, like my head feels kind of funny. I can instantly go and like use a couple drops of stuff and like fend it off of the past. Like, Mm -hmm. um, we should say that these are, these can be pretty powerful interventions. Like mm -hmm. they're, you don't want to go in blindly. Yeah, Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and so, yeah, I just, I just decided that especially if I'm going to talk about helping clients to live you know, a more healthy, toxic free life, then I should really like walk what I talk. Yeah. So, um, I've started trying to make some of my own products and stuff at home using oils as opposed to buying stuff off the shelf. Oh, um, yeah. Is there, can you give me one or two oils that you're just kind of like loving right now? Oh my gosh. Copaiba is one of my favorites. Okay. Don't even know what that is. Couldn't <laughs> um, even spell it if you asked me to. Well, Copaiba is yeah, it's like a superpower thing. Yeah. Um, it crosses the blood um, brain barrier. And so um, it can communicate with the brain. It can communicate with the nervous system. Um, it's great for helping with pain. It comes from Brazil. Is it I'll, a root? Is um, it a, no, it's is like it a, a sap. Um, sap, it, yeah, okay. It, com- it comes from a tree in Brazil. Okay. Got it. Um, and it smells really nice. Huh. Um, it actually kind of helps to like pre-treat tissue also. So there's like this softening effect that happens. Hmm. Um, and I kind of just love everything from Brazil anyway. So it made uh. sense <laughs> as soon as I was like, I'm really drawn to this. And like, of course it's from Brazil. I see. <laughs> um, so yeah, Copaiba is definitely one that I love to use. Um, I've been pretty excited about this, um, Roman chamomile serenity bergamot, like, um, uh, Blend, kind of mixture okay. blended together, yeah. um, for sleep. Um, mm. cause I started tracking my sleep patterns mm-hmm. and, um, sleep is where our brain gets a chance to like flush out any toxins that it's used during the day. So yeah. it's like, I should really get a handle on my sleep. Um, I tried this, um, like, this remedy and I have this, um, this app that tracks my sleep Mm -hmm. and whenever I use it, I go into a deep sleep and I stay in a deep sleep all night long. I don't wake up. Mm. Um, when I'm not using it, um, I can see a fluctuation on the chart of like waking up and moving around more. Um, I wake up and I feel more tired. Um, yeah. And it has like, um, so the serenity blend has like sandalwood, cedarwood, um, uh, lavender, um, vanilla, like it smells amazing. Sounds Um, good. Yeah. It's pretty tasty, especially (laughs) and waking up the next day feeling kind of fresh, you know, you can't go wrong. Oh, wow. Well, okay. Thanks for those tips. (laughs) I love that. Okay. Now on to a couple of things I like to discuss with body workers when I have them available in front of me. For sure. Let's go. Self-care. What do you do for yourself? How do you talk about it with your clients? What's your feeling about the culture of self-care in the world? Like anything you want to share about that? Okay. Um, wow, that's a broad, broad, amazing topic. <laughs> I mean, you can take any angle you want. We don't need to like, we don't need to do it all. But okay. just like, it's kind of like the the ongoing theme here is to sort of take back the commercialism mm. of self-care and to to make it more practical. Sure. Um, so to me, self-care is, um, anything that lights me up or anything that allows me to rest. Um, I love to dance. Dancing is, um, like a way that I've like healed a lot of parts of me. Um, and there's the community piece. And so sometimes self-care for me is like putting on music that I love and either dancing by myself in my house or, um, going to 
like going out dancing with people or um, taking dance classes mm. um, or, you know, connecting with some of my favorite dance teachers and just being around their like vibrational energy mm -hmm. is so good for, for me. And I feel myself elevated in that way. Nice. Um, so yeah, that's any particular dance that you're obsessed with at the moment. Oh my gosh. So I, oh yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> um, so Brazilian Zouk is Bay. I Brazil like again, of course. Brazilian. I know exactly. Yeah. Um, so Brazilian Zouk, I fell in love with four years ago and, um, have kind of like Zouk, Zouk, Z-O-U-K. Uh -huh. Z-O-U-K. Yeah. Um, man, if you want to go on a beautiful deep dive down YouTube, like just, you know, type in Zook and there's all sorts <laughs> of cool stuff. Um, I believe it. And um, I am also uh, learning about and training in urban kids in Kizomba right now. Okay. Um, they're from Angola, which is like pretty cool to have kind of that like grounded feeling. So those are both partner dances. Um, and then, um, I'm going to start learning or I'm really interested in learning, um, Afro dance, um, with Afro beat music and, oh, neat. um, yeah. So a little bit of something to dance just wow. by myself. Yeah. Do you think anyone <laughs> can learn to dance? Yes, I do. I disagree. No, I'm <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I, yeah, I think if you come, if you come to enough classes and you find the music that, um, that moves you in a specific way. Yeah. Um, and if you maintain a level of curiosity and come I've back. always wanted to be able to move like those people who like, I don't, I don't know what to call it. They can like, it's like they have such control over yeah. their body where like, they can Absolutely. Every what is I don't know what that's called. It's like a certain style of. Um, like, do you mean contemporary? Or I do guess you mean it more is like more. It probably is more hip hop yeah, style. Yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah, I think. Or even just break dancing. How cool is that? I mean, that? all yeah, yeah, all of it is super cool. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I I love to be around people. Um. And I'm really blessed to have friends that are so talented in mm. a variety of styles of dance, and so. Um, sometimes I'll end up calling one of them or, um, you know, try to set up a meeting with one of them. If like, if I know for myself, I'm needing a little bit of that kind of energetic yeah. feel. Um, also like with the partner dances, um, just training in that they, they both have this element of like really nice embrace to it. And mm -hmm. I kind of feel like our culture is like really like is hug deprived basically and like <laughs> contact deprived. And so, um, for me, um, for me, I need that. Yeah. It's really important. Yeah. Um, and dance is a really nice, safe, um, like, you know, happy with music way of, um, of achieving some of that. So, um, dance is a big part of my self care. I also, um, have a dog. I like to spend time with him. Mm. Um, and then, um, so that's the like building up part. And then, um, ever since my car accident, I've learned that I actually need more time to rest and just mm -hmm. like, I listen to my body if my body says like, um, cause now like my bot, my body's bossy with me now. Like she'll <laughs> say, yeah, we're starting to get a headache. It could lead to either this way where it's like a really big thing that you can fight me on it or you can go chill in a darker room down regulate yourself a little bit like listen to music or um you know watch a show that lets your mind kind of wander um and i've started to get a little bit better about listening and not not making my body you know beat me up before i actually do something about yeah. it that's great <laughs> yeah good for you that's that's not easy to do it's not easy to listen I know that from my own self, I like to ignore and then push and push and push until I'm right. ill. <laughs> right? I know. <laughs> Which when you say it back like that, you're like, wow, that's not a good idea. But it's so, it, it really is easy to do. It's had, yeah. it's a, um, I, it's kind of the blessing of my car accident, I think, because there was about four months that I couldn't work and I couldn't really like go to the grocery store. I could not be out in public as much as I wanted to. And mm. so it actually was like this weird detox of busy because mm. I just couldn't go anywhere. And so, um, now my body realizes like, I'm actually going to be okay. And there's time to get the rest of the stuff done later because I've experienced it, I guess. Yeah. 
yeah, it's interesting. The, well, it's this the probably, shiny part <laughs> probably ties in nicely. How do you think about longevity as a therapist? I know you're you're mm. fairly new to it in the big scheme yes. of things. Um, so do you? Maybe, maybe that's just maybe that's just it. Listening to yourself and knowing what you need, but if you could make any other comments about how you think about having a long career as a therapist. Sure. Um, so I really feel like, um, I'm very blessed to be working in, um, in a career that feels like an extension of myself. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so what, what I've been doing is, um, instead of trying to, um, think of every person as the client that I have to have at that moment. Um, I, I listen to my body and I've like made my schedule as such to where there's kind of an ebb and flow of like the days and times that I have slots available at the moment. Mm -hmm. Um, and I also am kind of trying to diversify what it is that I offer. So I can do coaching sessions where I can sit with people, help them process what's going on. Um, it's a lot more of like the mind. Um, and then I also will have people like get up and dance and move around because mm. I think movement is just, you know, one of the most healing and beautiful, um, tools that we have. Mm -hmm. Um, and that doesn't require the same usage of my body as perhaps doing massage. Um, I also love one of the tenets of Thai massage is loving kindness. Mm. Um, and so a big part of that is that, um, the treatment is supposed to be, as beneficial and copacetic for the therapist as it is for the client too. Um, and so a lot of times as I'm doing body work, like I'm getting a stretch or I'm um, oh, breathing yeah. differently, or, um, I'm engaging my body in a way that feels good to me. And, um, all of it's set up in such a way to where you can position the client and position yourself to where you're using, um, the most ease and also like trying to find different ways to use gravity. So, um, yeah, I kind of like, that was another reason why Thai massage really stuck out to me. Yeah. And so I'm hoping fingers crossed that that's gonna, um, yeah, that that's gonna kind of, um, help me be able to stay Serve in the field long for a while. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Okay, so I gathered from your bio that you uh, enjoy travel. I do. So yes. tell me about a recent favorite travel adventure. Okay, so um, I'm a person that keeps my passport on me all the time. because Just I'm, in case. Yeah, just in case. You never know when an adventure is yeah. about to be like you know at hand, and I don't want to miss out. So um, my latest and greatest adventure was to Thailand, actually. Okay. Um, yeah, I wanted to go and um, experience the culture and experience like authentic Thai massage and, um, yeah, just see what it's all about. Cause I'd fallen in love with the body work. I wanted to understand the culture behind it. And so, um, I spent a week in Chiang Mai with two of my best girlfriends. Um, and then I spent, um, a week in an elephant refuge, like outside, um, outside the city about an hour or so with another friend of mine that I went to East West with. Okay. Um, and him and his um, partner had gotten married a year before, and they were doing this um, Buddhist blessing over their, um, yeah, over their marriage. And so they invited, you know, just like, hey, we're going to be in Thailand if you want to show up, that kind of thing. And like 15 people ended up coming. Wow. And so I know. Yeah, they're very loved very people. <laughs> motivated friends. That's excellent. <laughs> exactly. So it was it was the most incredible experience just to be able to stay on site with like these elephants, be able to be near them and around them and um, like settle into a little bit more of a like, like slower pace of things like mm -hmm. getting up and having breakfast and, you know, walking around and talking to the elephants and sitting in a swing by the river and getting like literally the best like Thai iced coffee. Um, might be a day and <laughs> yeah. that's a great day yeah it was and, a great day and thai massage in thailand yes how do you like tell me about that like what oh is it gosh. different is it um well it's really interesting it they're like thai massage obviously over there you see way more than table massage that you see here so there's like thai massage um if you just be walking down the place. street right i mean yeah, they're it's just, just everywhere, everywhere. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah they're everywhere or there's like in the middle of the market like you can get like a foot massage like you know and it's very very accessible and um not not like 
I, I think people are used to getting them frequently. It's a part of, um, it's a part of just regular everyday life. life and culture. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas I think here we're more used to, well, I'll give myself a gift certificate like once a year and come mm-hmm. in or like, um, I'll do, you know, I'll call my therapist because like, you know, I strained my neck or whatever. We, we work our bodies until they tell us like, you better come in or else. Whereas there, it seems like, you know, there were lots of shops and all of them were busy <laughs> like yeah. all the time. It's like, People will stop in and get like, you know, get a session. Um, it's as normal as getting a haircut. Absolutely. Yeah. It almost seemed like Which Starbucks is, is an here. unfair <laughs> analogy for me to make. That's <laughs> <Yeah. I> <laughs> uh, anyway, if you're just listening, I don't have any hair. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. I, I can give myself my own haircuts with a razor. Um, that's so cool. Yeah. Part of my, my longer term mission I'm, I'm trying to release these like long form videos of, of body work to show mm. people what a full session looks like of sure. different modalities. Um, they've been a little more challenging to produce, uh, against the seeing clients and producing this weekly podcast, yeah, absolutely. but, um, like long term, I'd like it to take me on the road so I can mm. take the cameras and set up the gear and like record Thai massa- massage in Thailand and yeah. Lomi Lomi in Hawaii. And For sure. Indian rope massage, you know, like yeah. find all these obscure modalities and right. some obscure, some not obscure, but finding them all over the world. And, sure. And seeing yeah. them where, like where they originate. Yeah. There's, there's something really cool about that. I love, um, so my, my friend Eric and I, the one that, um, I went to go visit, we are hoping to set up, um, monthly community Thai events here to have it set up a little bit more like the way they do it in Thailand. Okay. Um, uh, in Thailand, there's several mats all on a floor. Um, and so you could be being treated right next to somebody else. It's a little bit less, um, less of the way that we do it here where everything's kind of behind closed doors mm-hmm. and it's one-on-one. Um, this is very much more like, cause you're fully clothed. It's kind of like just out in the open, just, yeah. you know, stopping by again, almost like, you know, like a therapeutic, like coffee date or, yeah. you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. So, um, and I think in, in that way, um, they're able to make it, um, like more affordable and, um, you know, accessible to people. And so yeah. I just loved that there was this, um, it was such a human experience, not, um, not something to wonder about or to like shy away from or any of that. It was just come in and have your body like, you know, start to feel better. Um, mm. and these, like these therapists were crazy. They were so good. Like at one point I'm like, I think this like whole woman is on my body in like different ways. Like she's currently treating like, you know, my hamstrings and my upper back at the same time with her knees in my glutes and her toes are doing something else. And I was like, okay, this is so cool. Yeah. <laughs> I want, I want to get to this level. <laughs> I want to awesome. know more about this. Yeah. Very neat. Well, wow. I'm sure you have many more travel adventures. I am. People I'm can definitely. can tune into you to to learn more about that stuff. Absolutely. What else would you like to say about the Megan Grace movement? Um. So the Megan Grace movement is um, it's the fusion of all the things that I really believe are like are good and healthy, at least for me, that had really helped me. Um. I wanted to make it in such a way where, um healing didn't have to feel like a part-time job. Um, when I was trying to heal from my car accident, um, between scheduling the appointments, driving to the appointments, um, you know, trying to keep up with them on the calendar, trying to remember them and actually do the homework for each of the therapists that I was seeing. It was like, I mean, I was exhausted. (laughs) I was just trying to keep up with all of it. So, um, I wanted to try to find a way to, um, help bring a sense of ease and health and well-being to people and get as much as we can um, in one session, um, like different modalities. So anything from like Reiki to um, uh, to the Thai body work, to um, stretching, to talking about things, to um, having, you know, being able to incorporate, a lot of times I incorporate dancer movement into whatever I'm doing. Um, it helps me to be able to kind of assess like how the client is moving through time and space. And if I can dance with them a little bit, then 
I might see something that they wouldn't even tell me. And mm. then I can kind of hone in on it and um, be able to help. So, um, so yeah, the, the Megan Grace movement is, um, I wanted people to feel like they're a part of something about us trying to take back, um, control of like our healthcare and our health and well being, and, um, to do it in different, um, more or less non-traditional ways. So through dance, um, essential oils, um, trauma-informed coaching, and then body work. And so with that, it made it so I know I'll never get bored either because I'm yeah. someone that really, really loves to dabble in learning. Yeah. And, and d- <clears throat> definitely seems to light you up. And it does. Sounds yeah. uh, like something everyone should check out. So to that end, how <laughs> should people find the Megan Grace movement? What's the best way to interact with you? Um, so I'm on Instagram quite a bit. Um, you can also find me on my website at, um, the Megan Grace and then mvmt.com. Um, all links will be provided and, in the show notes. Yeah. And then, um, um, yeah, I think those are probably the best ways to start a conversation, but, um, I love to do consultations. Um, I currently work out of Soma space in, um, the Hollywood district. So, okay. Um, over in Northeast Portland. And yeah, I would absolutely love to see you on my mat. Awesome. Well, I appreciate that. <laughs> um, I, yeah, I haven't had time massage in quite a while. I, I definitely, I think it's, it's overdue. Okay. Well, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having really me. Really appreciate it. Uh, to everyone out there, please uh, find Megan on her website and Instagram. And if you enjoy this show, please uh, subscribe and tell every single one of your friends about it. You can rate and review on Apple Podcasts and Spotify or wherever you find your podcasts. This is the Massage Hodge Podcast, and we will see you next time.